What's going on people, it's your boy D Rhymes and today we're going to be talking about the best settings for your Serato DJ Pro software that I think you guys are going to find useful. Remember, if you find my videos helpful, make sure you drop a like, share and subscribe. Let's get it. So you're a DJ that's just downloaded Serato DJ Pro and you don't know exactly what the best settings might be. Well, that's why I am here, your boy D Rhymes, to show you guys the settings that I use, that I've been using for the last six slash seven years that I think are going to be perfect for you. Let's get straight into it. So guys, this is my Serato DJ Pro software that I use all the time in the clubs. And what I'm going to show you guys is the best settings that I've been using since I've started. And I feel like I don't really need to change them i feel like they're perfectly fine it might work for you it might not but check these out so we're gonna start from dj preferences right here i feel like i don't need to put on the playback keys use shift okay that is very confusing not really needed at all if you are a nervous person when you're typing maybe put that on because you feel like you might hit a key that's going to make a mistake but if you feel like you're professional and you know what you're doing, keep that unchecked. You don't need that. Lock, playing deck, I keep that unchecked. What I definitely keep checked are these four things up here. That is sort cues and loops chronologically. That's definitely going to help you guys out. Have that ticked. You're definitely going to want to enable your hot cues because you want to see what hot cues you've registered and what ones that you've put on your system. And of course, you might not know when the track is ending. You're going to need the track end warning the deck will start flashing and showing you guys that it's coming to an end so you're ready to mix into another track etc and finally in the control preferences you're going to need your show beat jump controls on let me show you guys exactly what that is so you don't get confused let's just say you've got your track queued up to the front right here you can actually jump the track from four bars, eight bars, 16, 32, even from two bars. But you know, I usually have it on 16 and that means I can skip through the track just like that. Have that on guys, that's been very, very useful. Especially if you guys use intro tracks, you can pinpoint and set your hot cues to the correct bars so the track can slide in perfectly when you load it, all right? Now, onto song load. These are the sections that I have. Of course, you wanna play the track from the start. That means as soon as you load in the track, it's gonna play from the start. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, definitely do that. Second of all, me personally, I don't play the track from the first cue point because sometimes you wanna drop it from the beginning of the track. Maybe there's a bit of talking, maybe there's a sick little intro. So I usually have it from the beginning of the track. Thirdly, on this section here, you wanna have instant doubles locked in. Instant doubles basically gives you guys the ability to drag the track that's currently playing into the other deck and it'll be playing simultaneously just like that. Maybe you're using another CDJ and one is not working or maybe something's going on with your system and you need to use the right deck or the right CDJ. It's easy to do. That's the best way. So I will definitely have instant doubles on. All right. Second of all, I personally turn off effects. I don't really need them. The only effects that I have in the system are the ones up here where you can have a you can set your delay you can set an echo break echo etc etc reverb you know what that is now another great feature that serato dj pro has of course it's been introduced the last couple years is the stems feature where you can take away the vocals and leave the beat leave the drums take away the bass you can be very creative with it you can make mashups and whatnot so you definitely are gonna want to tick this box right here and that box is the analyze stems box guys this is a game changer when it first came out make sure you analyze your stems as soon as you load in the track depending on the kind of laptop that you're using hopefully you're using an up-to-date system preferably an m chip where it can analyze the tracks quicker and you'll be able to take away the uh, elements of the track so definitely have analyzed stems on all right finally i leave simple sync on i don't really use a sync ever but you want to have the simple sync on i believe it's a default anyway so guys moving on to our audio me personally i leave this as it is i don't touch it i don't mess around with the latency nothing like that my system is a uh, m2 chip 2023 i believe so i have no problems with the system at all let's go on to our library and display with the library and display settings like i said guys these are settings that i've been using all these years 
DJing. It could be different for you. Maybe you want to check one or two boxes that you feel is useful, but I'm showing you guys what I've been using for the last six slash seven years, and I prefer to use it like this. Let's get straight into it. So me personally, I don't use iTunes. Now you can show your iTunes library, but me, I've got OCD. I find it way better having the mp3 on my system and dragging it into crates that i've created i don't want to drag any music into my itunes library and dj from there it creates duplicates and whatnot me personally i don't do it now i also leave unchecked the protect library i don't feel like i need to protect the library i'm happy with how it is i want to be able to move things around freely all right custom crate columns i leave it checked off center on selected song i leave it checked off what i do have checked is subcrate tracks all right include subcrate tracks now it's completely up to you i don't really use the subcrates but you want the ability to create a subcrate so you guys can have that ticked on like myself so i also like to have these two boxes checked and that is reset play tracks on exit that means when you exit the software and you open it again all your tracks are fresh they don't show that they've been played so you can start a brand new set when you dj I prefer to have it like that instead of showing yourselves what you played previously is very messy. And of course, I like to enable play count so you can show yourself how many plays you have given that specific song. I leave these two checked on. Now, library text size, depending on how well you can see, you might need to make the font bigger, but I feel like the third notch right here is perfect for me. Like I said, you might have 2020 vision. You can see it at the smallest font, but me, I like to have it on the third notch where it's nice and clear. Not too big, not too small. For me, it's perfect. So you can have it on that, guys. Let's move on to the display section right here. Now, I don't show tempo matching display. I leave that checked off. Now, this is a pretty cool box that you may need to use from time to time is hide the track and the artist let me tell you a couple reasons why i've used this feature right here now listen you're going to be djing you're going to have a lot of people standing around you you're going to have a lot of nosy djs that are going to be watching your screen wanting to know what you're playing they're not even saying hi or showing love they are there specifically to be nosy and watch what you're playing check out your songs etc so in that situation where you have got a nosy dj that you're not really feeling their energy standing behind you you can tick this box right here for example you can see picture me rolling by two pack on deck one and of course deck two because we use instant doubles now if you click this box and go back the tracks are gone that means that nosy dj behind you can no longer see what you are playing not gonna lie i had to use this feature a few times i didn't like the energy around me i know what these djs and people were there to do standing behind me standing right next to me so i had to put it on now these are the four boxes that i have ticked in this section right here i have the eq colored waveforms ticks i think is very useful for myself i have the color key display ticked of course as well and i also have the performance pad q layout ticked as well all right so these are the three boxes on the left that i have ticked right here i feel like it makes serato way more user friendly and way more easier to use and finally i have the high res screen display ticked on it just makes serato look sharper and better if you have it ticked off you're gonna have serato looking a little more pixelated so you don't really want that you want it looking crisp and sexy when you're djing down here send usage data to serato that is ticked by default i don't really pay attention to it now a lot of you guys know that serato dj pro has live streaming services inbuilt in the system that you guys can toggle on and off i'm going to show you guys briefly the features that it has i think it's amazing i think it's a game changer and that's why i love serato dj pro so much let's get into it now i leave the box usually unchecked but if you do decide to check the box you have the ability to log into your apple music like i have you're able to log into your soundcloud beat port beat source and title and be able to stream songs from these live streaming services and drag them into your serato to play live which is pretty cool me i like to have the mp3s i don't really need to use this until i feel like i need to so i leave it checked off and it keeps my library nice and neat guys but this is a really cool feature like i said my settings may be different to yours but i usually have it checked off all right moving on to the mixer you know i leave it usually like this the crossfader to the max side effects 
I don't really play around with this, to be honest. Expansion packs, I don't really play around with this either. I hope you guys found this video useful. These are the best settings you can use for 2025 and beyond. These are the settings that I've been using. They've been doing me lovely since the beginning of my career. If you just downloaded Serato and you've come across this video and you don't know what to do, follow these steps. I promise you, you're not going to regret it. Remember guys, if you find this video helpful, if you find any of my videos helpful, please drop a like, share and subscribe to the channel for more useful DJ videos. I will see you guys on the next video. Your boy D-Rhyme signing out. Let's go.